So here we have, uh, it's probably a Craftsman, yes it's a Craftsman, Briggs and Stratton engine, 2008, 2008, February 19, automatic choke, no primer bulb, right? Front wheel drive, self propel. Looks like it's abused on the left side more than the right. This uh, cable for the shutoff was over here. Uh, and it's stretched so tight that it, that's just not right. I mean, when you look at that thing, it's, so I'm going to switch it over to the right so that it's working off. I've turned this around already. This hole used to be on the other side. Uh, and I just switched it to see if I can uh, get everything working on this double hold, which it was originally a double holder, right? One is for the wheel activation and one is for the on off, right there. So that's the first thing I'm going to work on because I know the lawnmower will start. Uh, it's not running very good right now, and it's low on oil, which means it's just been abused. So let me just come back a little bit. I'm going to try and extract this cable out of that conduit, and then we're going to use a Z-Bend adapter for this. Enough of this moving around. I was given this... <laughs> I was given this beautiful tripod, which you can't see, so that we wouldn't have the shakies anymore. So here we are. <coughs> Lovely. Let's just put the camera back over here behind the light, which is optimal. All right, I've got the cable cut. I had a hard time sh uh, shoving this all through while it was assembled. So we're going to go through that hole, that top one. There. I'm going to feed that through if we can. Yes. Camera on hip. There we go. So there. We'll go up to there and into there. And then we can shove this all the way down. <coughs> you can watch. I think now you're getting the idea. I don't want to cause camera issues. I don't want anybody to get angry with me. Oops, a daisy. We don't want to get into any of that. Okay, I had a right-handed stopper here. I moved it over to this side, but I had to change from left side actually to right side. Now I've got the cable on and down. And it means over here, I've got the action. And I've got this clamped onto here, and I'm just going to just make sure I'm good before I uh, cut anything off. I want to make sure I got spark. Now this one was the one that fired when I primed it. It really needs new oil. And look at that, can you believe it even ran? And I've cleaned that out. <laughs> okay, so this is primer fluid. We just want it to fire. <clears throat> and turn off. I'm going to set the camera up right on that spark plug and see if we got a spark. I'm going to yank on it a couple of times. Okay, I'm going to just have a look in the on the replay. So I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, my friends. On this mower now, when I I got a, a good plug in it. Uh, the blade's been sharpened. I fixed the on-off cable. I put gas in it. It runs good, but it will not choke. And it's an automatic choke. It's the dreaded, of all dreaded, 
with uh, automatic chokes. But early one, this is an early automatic choke. So I'm just going to pop the top off the shroud and we're going to see what's cooking under there. We need a 3 8 or uh, ooh, I'm using my right hand. 3 8 impact or socket set. Same thing, right? Um, ooh, yeah, and I gotta do the 5 16 Hey, first Briggs of the year. 5 16 should be three of these. I usually use a magnet to pick them up. Now this should tilt back, right? I'm going to disconnect, take out the dipstick. That's a choice you can do either. Ellis likes to leave the dipstick connected to the shroud. Now I've just got two 3 8 down on the back here. Whoop, wrong machine. And I'm going to see what's wrong with this choke. Just gotta find that drop bolt before it becomes a drop lost bolt. There it is. <laughs> All right. Now this should pull right off. We took the, the three shroud bolts off. We took the one dipstick bolt off. We took the three gas tank bolts off, and this whole rewind should just pop right off. We got a broken hoo dicker. See that? I've got, oops, there. That's supposed to stick straight up, and this is supposed to reach around there, I believe, like that. So that's just a little bit of automatic choke 101, right? So there we go, it's supposed to go. It should be snapped right off, right off, maybe off the ends, I'm not sure. There's got to be one more piece of plastic down in there, eh? I'm just going to do a little bit of airing. That doesn't look connected very well either, but it could be. Okay, three of those. Let's straighten out a few things first. doesn't take much. It's only a, like a, you know, it's a hair trigger. But this is broken right here. And I've got one in Mr. Dress Up's Tickle Trunk or in, uh, who's that other guy? That was in Canada and you guys had Mr. Rogers, right? Kind of the same dude. Okay, I get chuckled at. But look what I've got. One. with the muffler piece two and three so won't my customer be ha or not really a customer because I don't God, I don't make any money at this you guys this is for the YouTube right so let's just I think you know I don't know whether I should replace that or not what which one are we going to use which one looks the best that one's got three goobers on it. And I think. Wow, eh? It has a little muscle to it. But don't forget, I just. I'm going to replace the whole thing. I'm crazy. What time are we? 3.23. I think I got time. So we'll take this muffler off of here. Now 
If you're doing small engines, you're going to come across this. Okay, 7 sixteenths. Let's get the magic sockets out. Now, I was just running this thing, so it was going to be hot. Is that a half inch? Yep, wrong size. Okay, I can use that outside one. Yeah, I just don't think that's connected very well. So now, I'm going to use this one here. It needs a, a Duhummer gasket on each side. Tell me when the battery dies, okay? Sometimes I get teased by guys because I save stuff. But I don't save the big stuff, I save the little stuff, right? There we go. Now, oh yeah, drop everything. I'm going to just cover this exhaust port with my thumb. Good. Okay, one there, one there, and that sits like, I believe that just sits, probably goes like that. Alright, alright, let's get that muffler back on there now. It's not too hot to touch now. I think I might believe my buddy Steve's coming over for a happy hour today. And, uh, well, they don't call it unhappy hour. And he's a smart guy. Smarter than me, I think. Why won't that reach? Oh, it goes the other way. Can you still see what I'm doing? Kinda. So now, I'm going to take this muffler, rotate it 180 degrees, and put these guys back on there. And then this attaches back onto here like that. Three-eighths or 7 sixteenths dual uppers. Screwdriver and hammer. There we go. Now, quarter inch nut driver. We take this off, and we save the springs. One. I think that's all we need. We take that off of there like that. Might as well use the stock thing on my J. That's pretty tight, eh? I'm gonna hook that spring back up to there. Oh, don't lose it! Did it come off? Are you still watching? Yep. Where did that spring come off of? It's right on that tiny clip there. 
And on this plastic, plastic arm there. It's crunching. What's it crunching on? Oh, it's leaning on that. I wonder if we're way out of adjustment here. <clears throat> Something's out. It's rubbing on the coil. Um, we're close. Okay, let me show you what we got. I'll turn off the camera. So I replaced this arm right here. It's the auto. This heats up as the engine warms up right away and moves forward and takes off the choke. See that? Choke on, off. It's just sticky. It's choke on, off, on, off, right there. You can see the little door there, right there. But we've got a little rubbing. And I wonder if that coil is not set right. So I'll just, something's just crooked, so thanks guys. So obviously it's the next day and I got the furnace on. So I installed this new used, pardon me, there we go. I installed this new used choke application device and it's rubbing on the coil. But my friend, that we had happy hour last night and it, it's not a, it's old guy stuff. You have a few beers and you talk, eh? But look at I've got some vertical play in there. Do you see that? So I'm going to try a different one. I've got three. It might even be the screw that's worn, right? But I'm going to see if maybe that helps. Well, it still hits, eh? Now I can zip that with my Dremel. Because it could be from a slightly different mower. There could be gaskets missing here to make the whole thing, or more gaskets to pull it this way. We don't know, right? But I'm going to just play with it, and I'll show you what I come up with in a bit. So welcome back. Hi, guys. This is the one spare I had and I put it on the mower and there is visible visible slack there this is one of the other ones and it's tight you know like tight as in no slack I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of lubrication on that I think this is the winner, even if I have to trim the end of it. Good. So I'll come back on the mower in a, in a shape. Oh, we've got to go up a little bit. Okay, you can see the choke arm activator. And I've got my new plastic arm on there. It still hits there, but I think it was meant to be, unless, you know, maybe this coil was changed out years ago too, eh? But what I have now is a little propane tank here, and we're going to just heat this up, because I can't test this when I put it all together again. <laughs> I can't test it to see what it looks like with everything covered up. So now we want the heat is going to move this forward and take the choke off. It's starting to. You guys getting any of this? Oh yeah. Let's give the muffler a shot. There it goes. Now I'm going to go see if the choke is wide open. Yes, it's wide open. So now, don't try this at home. This comes out like a Freon, eh? Watch this now, it should go back. You guys are watching that choke lever right there? Yes, this is dangerous.
It's not touching anything. And back to unchoke. Okay, that's your science lesson for the day. I like it. Now I'm going to check the tension on that now. And I think that's about right, eh? Should I stick just a tiny bit of lubricant down that? I don't know. It's going to get awfully hot. No, I'm not. But I am, while well, I've got the opportunity, going to tighten up this intake manifold a little bit because they get loose too. There. I think we got her. Wasn't that cool? I'm just going to put everything back together again and we're going to try this old beast. But while I've got it up on the lift, we're going to have a look at the belt. <laughs> big picture. Well, I always like to look at the big picture, right? So in my drawer tools, divided in half, this is metric, no, this is, sorry, this is standard, and then this is metric on this side. It just makes it easier for me. You don't have to do it that way. Here we go. going to be some goo in here now. Oh, not bad, eh? These belts never, never, never seem to go bad. They can and do last the life of the machine. Now we're going to put this machine back together again, and you're going to watch. <laughs> so I'm just putting the gas tank bolts on now. Three, five sixteenths shoulder bolts. I know a lot, most of you know this, but not everybody does. So a shoulder bolt has a little gap down there so that you can go through two or three layers of material before you hit the thread. Good. And then some protection. I can bring that back now. And we're in plastic, so let's not use the, the plastic thread strippers. So do you think it's going to work? Not quite, eh? Something doesn't match. Looks like there's been a mismatch of parts here. Now I'm going to lower the mower down to the ground. Let's just check and see if we got any oil underneath here for me slopping around. Looks good, huh? Okay. We don't have the air filter on yet. It should start and the uh, and the air the choke should come up. Well let's check our fuel, make sure we didn't lose it all. I put about 10 glurps in. 
And it's got about 10 glurps in there. Push the tractor back. Okay, should fire first pull. side. Hopefully I can feel the warmth and the oil through the tube. Yes I can. Stop a little more. Okay, that's good enough. Love it. Now, I'm going to turn you off, add 500 milliliters of oil, and come back. So don't worry, that black bottle, I just refill that. <coughs> I buy my oil in uh, five gallon pails. And I put in them whatever it says. Mostly 1030 in these older Briggs. Okay. But it's a little early yet. Well, it's just... Just a hair above full. Oh, where are we? Right there? Mm. We can live with that. Hello, my friends. Here's the big six horsepower Briggs and Stratton Quantum with that had the bad cable and the bad automatic choke. We're just going to start it up here before we send it back to the owner. Uh, 